So I finally got the two front panels with some screw knobs to lock them in place. So I was doing my first test run. The temperature was 75. I drove about 19 miles. It's the same amount every time, but it shows up on the trip between 18 and 19 miles. First trip was without any towing and at 55 miles an hour I used 267 watt hours per mile which works out to be a lot more than the range promised 374 and this is rated at 348. So the next thing to do was to transfer the power from the solar to utility so that's the sub feed that that solar trailer runs when it's parked in the drive. Now that I've transferred it I can safely remove these plugs although the hot ends are always female so there's no danger either way but there's no interruption of service so I got the screw knobs in place to hold the front panels down when I'm traveling and then I hooked up and I was ready to do my first range test at 55 miles an hour with the trailer so here I am uh, driving the same route, this time with the trailer attached. The first time it's been towed because I haven't had everything secured. But I made the same trip, 18, almost 19 miles, 703 watt hours per mile. That was a lot worse than I expected. 100,000 watt hours, which is 100 kilowatt hours, divided by 703 shows I'd only get 142 miles if I used every bit of it. That is not as good as I did when I did the earlier video, which you guys can watch, with my Tab 320. I took it to Miami and back, actually Key West, Florida. And all those calculations are available there. But stay tuned to the end, because the one thing I haven't factored in is the weight of that tab 320 versus the solar trailer. I haven't weighed it yet, which will happen at the end of the video. So then my intent was I was going to do a trip at 60 and 65 miles per hour without the trailer to give a true comparison because when I increase the speed with the trailer to 60, it's not fair to compare it to a 55 mile an hour without the trailer range test. However, I was concerned I wouldn't have enough battery left. So in this video, I'm only going to show you how the range decreases from 703 when I increase my speed to then 60 and ultimately 65. To give me an idea of what speed I should be traveling depending on how far between the superchargers are. So then I made the same trip at 60 miles an hour. I went low tech. That's me filming by hand. And I got 760 watt hours per mile at 60 miles an hour. So I lost some range, 100,000 watt hours or 100 kilowatt hours divided by 760. That puts me at 131 miles or of range if I was completely full. I would never take it that far. Then here's 65, and there was a big jump. Five miles an hour, I only got 852 watt hours per mile. So now it's even worse. I think I'm going to be towing at 55. And you can see I only got 117 miles of total range and perfect conditions. So then I took the car to a local business that I knew had scales. Trailer in Tesla, 9120 pounds. Tesla only, 5620 pounds. So that put me at 3,500 pounds is what the trailer is now that I have it loaded with batteries and solar. So you have to remember, I also have 60 kilowatt hours of battery storage hooked up to a 12,000 watt inverter, which gives me 50 amps of service. The Tesla charges max at 32 amps, so I'm well under that. So I would have less range, less range anxiety 
because I could always pull over and park. I went from 2,200 kilowatt hours on average of usage, not even factoring in the charging of the car and the bike, which I've never really done, so I don't have a bill. But let's say it's three to 4,000 kilowatt hours. My last bill, which I just got, I only used 133 kilowatt hours of utility service because I have 7,000 watts on the roof and I have 7,000 watts for this trailer, 4,500 mounted, plus I have some a second input to that PV when it's parked in my driveway. So when I'm in my drive, I actually have 7,000 watts on the trailer. So those 14,000 watts or 14 kilowatts of solar have reduced my bill significantly and I still have yet another 7,000 watts to put over my garage on my roof. So I'll, at the end of the project, I'll have 21 kilowatt of solar that will be feeding 60 kilowatt hours of batteries in the trailer and about 100 and 1,520 kilowatt hours of storage for the other two systems in my house. So I'm looking forward to being energy independent. I don't know how long the payback period will be. I have a lot of the receipts. I'm going to try to total this up, but I'm guessing this build trailer was 8,000. Then the unistruts, the batteries, the inverter, Everything I did inside, maybe another 17,000. So I'm guessing at a, I'm at about 25,000 for this portable storage. So please stay tuned for upcoming episodes. I'm going to detail those costs. If you want to, like and subscribe and visit the channel to both watch my adventure and the price breakdown. But thank you.